Good evening and welcome to the last late debate of 2015. Tonight we'll be assessing the past 12 months and asking, is this the year when the political world changed for good? How significant is the decline of the Lib Dems, Labour's lurch to the left and the rise of the SNP? And we'll also have something to say on the topic of the day, exactly where a new runway for London should be built, Heathrow or Gatwick. But before that, Donald Trump's outrageous attack on our capital. To discuss that, I'm joined by the Labour MP for Hornsey and Wood Green, Catherine West, the Conservative MP for Croydon South, Chris Philp, the former Kingston and Surbiton Liberal Democrat MP, Ed Davey, and the Green candidate in the next May's mayoral election, Sean Berry. Very warm welcome to you all. Let me kick off with you, Catherine, because uh, your mayoral candidate, of course, is Sadiq Khan, who's a Muslim. Uh, we'll have to, if he's elected, uh, go around the world. And if Donald Trump has his way, he faces the prospect of being banned from the United States. How do you react to that? Well, I think Donald Trump's comments were appalling. And I'm so pleased that people have, you know, said categorically that they don't agree with him. And I was very pleased yesterday in PMQs that the Chancellor was able to put on record what we all believe, which is that this is just outrageous. We believe in a diverse community. We believe in everyone being welcome and an inclusive approach. And Donald Trump has just been dreadful. And Hillary Clinton, of course, has come out against <coughs> it as well. He speaks for a lot of people in America quite clearly. He's, a, he's ahead of, of all the polls in America. Well, he certainly doesn't speak for people in the United Kingdom. And I completely agree with Catherine on this. What Donald Trump said was absolutely outrageous. Um, not a single Conservative would agree with him. And actually, I think Boris got it right. He said there are some parts of New York I wouldn't go to for fear of meeting Donald Trump. Yes. Uh, there is, uh, I think he has absolutely zero agreement from any part of the House of Commons or the United Kingdom in what he said. It was disgraceful and outrageous. Was well, there any substance, you think, Ed, in the his allegation that the police in the metropolitan area are fearful of going into certain areas because Absol of the threat of, from the Muslim community? Absolutely not, and the Met Police have made that very clear, and I, my colleagues are absolutely right. It was quite outrageous <laughs> comments, and actually I'd like Donald Trump to come to London, <laughs> and I'd like him to debate with the London mayoral candidates, Sadiq, Caroline Pigeon for the Liberal Democrats, Sean and, and, uh, and Zach, and I think, you know, the four of them uh, could really show that the London, he doesn't speak for anyone in London, and his views are repellent all people. Right. You are a mayoral candidate. Sharma, what, what's your response to, to what he's had to say? Uh, I'm just absolutely shocked. The profound ignorance about London in particular that he showed um, and the comments, um, they are absolutely beyond the pale. They cross the line. I think the White House itself said that that you know, breaches the Constitution of America to say that Muslims, people should be banned from the are USA. Are you worried about the squad you get? When you see religion. shots of these meetings where it's, you know, they're all, yeah, come on, Donald, are you a bit worried about I, that? I do find that quite terrifying, actually. Um, I do hope the Republican Party do something mm. about this, actually, because he's more or less disqualified himself from being the leader of the free world with those comments. Yeah, but there are comments in, in some of the papers this morning picked up from <laughs> serving police officers, talking on local radio, talking to, to various social media outlets, etc. Actually, there is some substance in what he's saying about us being fearful of going into certain areas. Well, I think that's why we've had such a fierce debate in Parliament about cuts to the police, because, as you'd be aware, Mr Osborne did slash back the police in 2010, and we've lost 17,000 police officers off the streets. Yeah, and I think there's a slightly different issue. This there is, about is them being but, I wonder whether, attack. but I wonder whether they feel because they have been really sort of under attack, as mm. have all the public services, that they just feel as though mm. really they haven't got what it takes well, hang on, let's to be clear, Let's be clear that. on that point. The number of police in London has remained constant at around about 32,000 for the last five years. Crime in London has fallen dramatically. Mm. In the autumn statement last week, the Chancellor protected the police budget yeah. and he's increased oh, counter-terrorism yeah, spending. And he's, and he's increased well, counter-terrorism yeah. spending by 30%. So the government has a good record right. on police well, numbers in London the point of a fear and of on attack, crime. Fear of attack. Well, well, look, I'm, sure there are some areas, I'm sure there are some areas which are more difficult than others, but the police should not be afraid to go anywhere, and we need to make sure we're fully engaged with uh, different communities, including the Muslim community, to make sure there is no sure. no go area for yeah, the police. Listen, I, I think we should back to the issue, and the issue was when, uh, in my constituency, my former constituency, when the English Defence League, the far right, came and attacked the the, the, the mosque in Kingston, mm. the police were fantastic, yeah. the local community was fantastic, and we stood behind uh, that uh, group of Muslims, that community of Muslims, and showed that the whole community, for all faiths and non and with a strong support the police were behind them and I think that is the mood across London actually. Should we in view of the incendiary nature of his remarks ban Donald Trump from coming to the UK? I have supported the petition uh, to, to say that. We do ban people for, for hate speech and I think that qualifies as hate speech and I wouldn't want him to see him come to the UK. Um, I'd be happy to debate him via Skype, save a flight from Should America we ban him Chris? Well. 
Well, look, I generally believe in free speech, and I think when you ban someone, it's because they're specifically inciting uh, violence or criminal or terrorist acts. And I'm not sure Isn't what that he said. Encouraging it? I'm not sure what he said actually incited a terrorist or violent act. If he ever did say anything which incited a violent act, then I would ban what him. But I think, think we've got to be careful well, about free speech. No, I think we have to be sure that we don't turn him into a martyr. Mm. And by having him here, having an open debate, mm. What, allowing him to see that in the House of Commons we have our differences, mm. but we don't stoop to that racism. Yeah, I think we should get him here, we should challenge really him, we should make him a problem. Okay. Let's look back on, on the year now and, and ask, you know, has 2015 been a turning point? Is it a year we'll look back on and say that's when everything changed? Well, certainly it was dramatic enough uh, with many of the old certainties thrown out of the window in an election that defied predictions. And as uh, for what's been happening since May, well, I'm hoping my pal will provide uh, the answers and point the way forward. So let's, let's just cast our minds back uh, to that election. And let's put the point to you, Chris. Were you just a little bit surprised that you won? Well, in retrospect, so yes, I was surprised. I wasn't expecting an overall majority. Um, but when you think about it, actually, the record of the government over the previous five years um, was actually a pretty good one. Uh, Two the million coalition government, which is the yeah, coalition government. So why do we have more Liberal Democrats? Well, because, uh, that's a question uh, you, I'm glad you're, so you're saying that the Liberal Democrats have played a really good role in government. That, that's a, that's that. a question for you to answer. But uh, look, two million new jobs, 75% of them full time, record growth, you know, inflation down at zero, wages going at 3%, mm. a million more operations good on the sell. NHS, good seven sell. billion more pounds for the NHS. When you think about all of those facts, the Labour mm. Party's scare tactics, Ed Miliband's scare tactics didn't work, and the public voted on the basis. Of the facts. Is Ed Miliband to blame? I mean, the Labour did quite well in London, yeah, or, or better than it's, the other parties. Why didn't the rest well, of the country follow London? Well, it was really funny because, of course, I did. We did really well. Yeah. Ed, Ed Miliband was actually popular in Hornsey and Wood Green, and we went from minus seven thousand to plus eleven thousand, mm. second best result in the country. So, you know, I can't share what Chris is saying, and I also think there was a bit of luck in it. Dropping yeah. the oil price just before the election makes everybody feel good, a bit more money in their pockets, um, and also the Scottish national question. I don't think that played well for us. Do you feel you got? all of the blame and none of the credit? I mean, do you think you took a hit because of just simply being in coalition? Yeah, that was part of it. That, 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 that was certainly part of it. We had, we had an awful night. There's no escaping that. Yeah. Um, what's really noticing as we've been to read the rooms afterwards is the Tories spent £30 million just against the Liberal Democrats. And, you know, people need to sort of ask whether that sort of politics, where there's money is, is used in that sort of way, yeah. really makes us as democratic as we yeah. want to be. I mean, let's remember, the Tories didn't get a huge share of the vote. They only got yeah. what, what, what uh, Blair got in 2005. And I think people now are saying, you know, bring back, almost bring back the coalition, because yeah. look at what the Tories are doing without the Liberal Democrats restraining yeah. them. Look at what the Liberal Democrats yeah. did. Take, take the environment, take climate change, take renewable energy, which was obviously uh, part of my brief. We made massive strides in the coalition. But you didn't get the um, didn't get uh, support. Well, we didn't, okay, we didn't get credit, but people are now yes. seeing, now we've gone, they're now seeing what we did. did. And we're now, they're also now seeing that the Tories left their own devices are hitting the poor. The fact that they're attacking social housing, the, the tax credit cuts, they've got a shocking record. Total, hitting total, the total, that is total nonsense. It's we've put absolutely through, we have put through What's the biggest, let me finish, we've put, through no, the no. Biggest, we've put through the biggest minimum wage increase in history that is going to protect people and help people on low but, incomes. But, and I'm proud it is a conservative open Can I government ask you, can I ask that. you, why did you vote for tax credit cuts one week and then change your mind a few weeks later? Yeah. You knew you got it wrong. It was a scandalous thing that you did, and you should be ashamed. Uh, uh, how did he well, suddenly find, how did he suddenly find you, £27 you, you, million you, you, pounds down the back of a sofa? It was, it was a billion, not billion, not billion. Uh, uh, arguably, so during so Hans' own political career. So the, in, the independent Office of Budget Responsibility updated the figures in November compared to July. There was £27 billion pounds over five years. That's £5 billion pounds mm. a year right. more. And we chose to use that on avoiding some of the more difficult things right. that we would otherwise Hang have on, to I'm do. And that was a responsible... That was a responsible and a fair thing to do. Very briefly, Ed. Look what's happening in social housing. The cuts on social housing are going to mean there's going to be more homeless people and the help that's been given in, house, in shel sheltered housing mm. and, and housing shelters for the most vulnerable run by people like Salvation Army, they're being cut. It's a scandalous attack on the poorest uh, in our society. Let me uh, bring you another question. Has politics going changed going for, forever now? I mean, you've got, what, one representative in the House, the Lib Dems have got a, a mere eight, the Labour Party will come to them in a minute as lurch to the left. Has politics changed forever? I think this election was the, the least proportional election we've had in a very, very long time. Um, the Conservative majority comes about, I think, from the, yeah. uh, the decline well, of the Lib Dems. That's the system we've got. But there, are some, yeah, there were some fantastic results for us. I mean, in Bristol, we had the biggest swing in England. And well, you've second. done better with a different leader. Um, well, no, we, we did fantastically well under the leader we had. You've got to remember that our membership has increased something like four times under Natalie's mm. leadership. And we had a really, really good election. So. The question I ask about, as politics change forever, applies to you as well, obviously, because in view of what's happened to the Labour Party and the emergence of, of, of Jeremy Corbyn, 
Corbyn. Um, you're in a mess, aren't you? No, we are exactly where we should be for six months after an election. What? And the arguing with defeat, each other? And the second defeat a, which a we've had. Party, so what, what we're doing at the moment is having a debate, and that's extremely important for the main political party. But it's a which debate in which you're tearing yourself government. apart. It's the first well, time I've heard a debate I think called what's a civil war really important debate. is that we actually open up, that we speak to people, that we actually have those questions because I think what happens in opposition, particularly against a very right-wing government like this, which is threatening to take away the Human Rights Act, which is threatening people's um, rights at work, which is attacking disabled people who happen to be on benefit, mm. and which is taking away lifetime tenancies for people in social housing. They're extremely right-wing proposals, and what we need to do is have a debate about the best way to attack that, and that's where Even we're Even if at. it we're divides your debate. party as graphically and as publicly as it has done so far? That's a debate and it's very healthy. Uh, and many people, I have to say, particularly the younger generation, think Jeremy Corbyn's a breath of fresh air. I love him. Well, I mean, looking at some of my more moderate Labour colleagues, I feel rather sorry for them because they find themselves in this terrible position where their party has been taken over by this rather odd left-wing faction, which commands some support, but not broad support in the country. And I think what... How do you know that? And I think, well, look at the opinion polls. But I think what... What's, they just want Eldon West. But I think what's... Uh, that's, that's a very they, safe they Labour did very seat. well. But look, if Why I think, what, I think, the, the, I think the questions that Jeremy Corbyn finds it hardest to answer are ones on security. This is someone who, you know, uh, his shadow chancellor thought MI5 should be disbanded, the police should be disarmed. He just appointed Ken Livingstone, mm. Ken Livingstone, as his national security advisor. And those are the questions that I think the Labour Party find right. it hardest to answer. And I feel a bit sorry for them, to be honest. Well, I don't feel sorry for anybody. I think we're in a position where we've had two election defeats. We're six months into a new parliament where some of the proposals coming out of the government are extremely reactionary. And I've said, you know, no more lifetime tenancies. We've got the trade union yep. bill, which is horrendous. Um, threats around the Human Rights Act, um, attacks on disabled people who are on benefit. Um, and we've got just you a raft of things. And, and what happens is you do get people getting extremely angry. And what they do, they want people to oppose. And so they're trying to push uh, but, 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 Labour Catherine's to right be... On those which is what you failed it's, to do, actually, what, 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 when what, what, you were in Catherine's government. Catherine's got those lists, and actually she's just wrong there. The Liberal Democrats in government stop those things. They're now happening, and the problem is we, the official opposition is in civil war and not able to oppose. I, 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 Britain needs, for our economic welfare, for our environment, for our <laughs> social cohesion, it needs a strong opposition to stop the yeah. Conservatives I, doing what they're doing. And, they're doing. and unfortunately, we don't have one. I'm going to bring in Charlotte on the end. One of the things it's divided on, has been divided on is whether or not to, to uh, uh, attack uh, Syria or bom bomb Syria. Now, mm. let's just get our like, ground rules here. Where do, where do you stand on that? Um, I stand and we stand uh, against bombing. We don't mm. think that's the solution. What we need in, in the Middle East is a, is a working peace process. That's the, the strife, the bombing, all the things that are happening there are what's recruiting people to ISIS. And the best way to defeat them is to have a working peace how process. Can you, in how the can area. you stand by when uh, 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 and not support an ally like France after what happened in Paris? And I think we can support um, our our other allies by encouraging them to go for things like a no-fly zone, for example. Um, those are the ways to create peace. You don't create peace by bombing. We know this from multiple uh, conflicts how, in the past. How did you vote on just this? Cause more problems. Yeah, like the majority of Labour MPs, I couldn't support the government on this particular proposal mm. because actually we are helping our allies because in uh, Iraq we're doing some work that we began a long time ago and we're trying to finish and the elected government there invited the UK in, which is quite different from the proposal in Syria because if you speak to the Syrian diaspora here in the UK, they're pretty unhappy about the situation with Assad and it's not a perfect sort of intervention. So, so what do you say Chris to, the, to those who say that by taking this action we're increasing the risk to cities like London where you know we're, we're at almost inviting ISIS to, to, to come and attack us and you can't do this kind of thing without an end game plan. We know less about the potential outcome going into Syria than we did about going into Iraq. Well, look, we're a, th we're a target already. <coughs> ISIS and, and Al Qaeda and those sort of organisations have been targeting the West since 1998 long before any of our military intervention. So we should be clear, we are a target already. Mm. And what we're doing is defending ourselves by disrupting ISIS, who have, who have uh, plotted and organised seven potential plots against London in the last few months. We're also supporting our work in Iraq, because by hitting their headquarters in Syria, it makes it more likely and, we can yeah. re-establish yeah. Iraqi Syria, government yeah. control. But finally, we shouldn't forget, ISIS is, or Daesh, we should call it Daesh, is an evil organisation that murders, beheads, rapes, and throws gay people off the top of buildings. Yeah. They're a wicked 
organisation, and it is quite right. right that we degrade Let's just them. get the Lib Dem position on this, because like, I mean, they're all split to some degree. You, you were split. I mean, Charles Kennedy was against going into Iraq. Where do you sit on this one? Well, I voted against the Iraq war, um, unlike the Labour and the Tory parties, because it was illegal. There's no UN support. The evidence was dodgy. It would be, even became clearer yeah. after, after that. So there's a very, very strong case uh, against the Iraq war. I think this question, um, I support Tim Farron, and, and I think we were right to support the government on this, for this reason. There was UN backing, so there was a legal yeah. status to it. Moreover, uh, just as you said, the, the evidence that uh, ISIS and Daesh uh, are doing the most appalling things, not just uh, in uh, Syria, but also on the streets of Paris, of course we had to act. Mm. Uh, one final point before we, we move on and talk about Heathrow, that's in just a tip, but we're also coming up and looking ahead to the next year. The big issue is obviously going to be the EU. Um, where do you stand on that? I'm very pro-European. Um, I'll be voting to stay in. I'm supporting the campaigns. We've got a cross-party campaign Even if David Cameron comes away with nothing? Even We've got a cross-party campaign in Camden to stay in the EU um, and keep and keep our links with Europe. Um, we have, I mean, we, we have so many Europeans in London. They're so valuable to our society. In Camden Council, we have several councillors who are from the EU. I mean, we have, um, you know, we have very, very strong But if strong David Cameron does continent. not get any of the reforms he's after, particularly with regard to controlling the number of EU immigrants coming into this country uh, and stopping them having welfare benefits, housing benefits, if he gets none of that, you still support it? I think the EU needs reform, but the reform is not in the ways that David Cameron is trying to uh, negotiate. We need more democracy in Europe. We need less power for the Council of Ministers. We need more power for the Parliament. There's a lot to be debated about Europe and how it can he be changed. He's not, he's not going to get those reforms, Chris, is he? Let's face it. And if he doesn't, what, how, will you, how will, you, well, will you stand? Let's wait and see. Clearly, he's in the middle of a negotiation, so let's not prejudge the result of that. I'm confident he'll make progress. George Osborne came to the Treasury Select Committee, which I sit on last week, and said he was pleasantly surprised by the reception well, he, he was would, getting. Well, he would, wouldn't he? He would, so, wouldn't look, I mean, on. So, exactly. I think, so I think, I think they are making progress, but it's going to take probably yeah. another year Ed. before a deal gets hammered Ed. out, and let's just wait and see. Well, Liberal Democrats have always been very strongly pro-European because we're safer. We're safe in terms of the economy. We're safe in terms of security. One of the reasons the European mm. Union was, was, started, was, was started was because of the, the, the world wars and all yeah. the damage done. But we're if we don't get some further control, control on immigration, I mean, would you still be... Well, I mean, we've called for some tougher, tougher benefit rules, but I don't think it's going to uh, solve the immigration problem the way you describe. Because we're going for, quite rightly, a higher living wage, yeah. that's what's attracting, will attract people yeah. in. The fact that there's work in this country and it's better paid work. Last word to you, Catherine, on this issue of the, well, of the EU, where we go from Very pro-European, um, the peace argument. We don't Irrespective want of the fact that half the business leaders in this country say it's not going to make well, a scrap I of think, difference either I way? I think I listen to the ones who say we should stay in because it's hugely disruptive as well, but also for London itself where I pre represent so many jobs are tied up with the European Union and so on and uh, I think it's really important that we don't lose the gains we've made for example workers rights or environmental protection and so on and I think we should stay in there be open-minded be progressive and be positive okay. here's to the European Union now the government uh, promised us a decision before the end of the year on whether and where London should get an <laughs> extra runway Heathrow or Gatwick with just uh, three weeks until New Year's Eve they're cutting things rather fine it's a hot political potato especially as it's become entangled in next year's mayoral election and the suggestion is of course uh, Chris I'll come to you first of all the suggestion is that the government's thrown this into the long grass we won't uh, have any firm decision either way about uh, a third runway at Heathrow or wherever because they don't want to bog up uh, you know the chances in in the mayoral elections and Zach Goldsmith of course who said he resigned from the Tory party if a third runway went ahead uh, the political they're, they're making political capital out of this aren't they well, or trying to I think the truth is this is a really complicated and difficult issue and I think what the government and I think and I think what the government are doing <laughs> is is thinking about it very carefully they they've had 12 years on, to yes, think yes, about well, yeah. they haven't been in power for 12 years they've commissioned the Davis report which reported only four or five months ago it's raised some serious issues particularly to do with air pollution New around ones? Heath particularly to do with air pollution around Heath throw and I think it's quite Make right that we I think it's quite right that we just think about these issues very carefully this this decision will, will, will and, and the, on, this, and this the fact that Boris is against it you know Zach Goldsmith is against it Theresa May has a constituency this which decision, affected Justin Green listen, John, has a constituency that John, this decision, got nothing to do with it John this decision will be with us for the next 30 40 50 years so I think it's quite right that we take the time we need to make sure that it's been properly thought through and Ed, I think that's the approach the government well, are taking despite the uh, fact that Conservatives no longer seem to worry about climate change I think even they didn't 
wouldn't want to announce a Heathrow runway while Paris climate change talks are on. Yeah. Uh, that would be even too embarrassing for them. Yeah. Um, but the Cameron's got a real problem was because when he first talked about this before the 2010 election, he was vehemently opposed. I mean, yeah. he, t he spoke against a third runway Heathrow in the strongest he possible said, terms. He said, no ifs, uh, no buts, there will not be a so, third so, runway. You know, now, if he changes his mind, he's got no credibility whatsoever. Yeah. Well, he, has to, he appears to have changed his mind, Well, look, that was, a, that was a pledge made in the 2010 election for that parliament, and it's a pledge that he kept. But, of course, as the situation develops and passenger numbers change, of course you keep those things oh, under You mean to say he didn't have those predictions in front of him when yeah, he made that? Well, these things, look, these things, they no, have, of course they've changed. We've had the Davis Commission report. All kinds of things mm. have changed. But the most important thing is yeah, the climate government... Climate change science has gotten worse. <laughs> but the, most, the, the air pollution the most, things have got worse. The most important thing is that we think carefully about the air pollution right. implications, and the government you, that. You wouldn't have a runway anyway, I presume? Uh, no, I mean, we did. All the mayoral candidates that stood up a few weeks ago outside Parliament and kept repeating that line, no ifs, no buts, no new runways, from yeah. David Cameron. Uh, there's absolutely no question that they can meet these environmental tests. Right. If Heathrow you mean they can't cannot, meet them, yeah. They, they cannot them. announce yeah. that they yeah. can expand Heathrow without breaking the law in all kinds so of ways. So what do you say to the boss of industry and commerce who said we can't afford not to have one? I, I don't agree with them. I think we can do without any new airport uh, runways in the south of England. Anywhere in the England. UK? In the southeast of England, for certain, we can do without it. All we need is a very simple change to to aviation tax, a frequent flyer levy, to dampen down the demands. And the extra demand that people are talking about isn't from business Catherine? flights, it isn't from uh, people taking an individual holiday, it's from frequent yeah. flyers. People who take three or, three or more flights a year take 70% uh, of the these flights. Are called Catherine, you're not Catherine, you're Chris. True, I'm not. Um, <laughs> I think he, the government needs to make a decision. The government is the executive power of the country. Well, which right. way are you and writing to make that decision? Well, they're paralysed, aren't they? Yeah. Well, what about you? What about the well, Labour Party? Where are you? The Labour Party would like to see more aviation capacity because, you know, we agree with the so CBI. So a third around where Heathrow? Because the CBI was fairly Not strong yeah. in its words this week. Yeah. And where basically Catherine? saying that the government needs to make a decision. Come what on, you you've do? got this huge majority now. Use it and make the decision. You You're paralysed. What do you do? Well, I would look at a mix of Gatwick, Stansted, Luton, let's let's be creative. Let's look at that. Let's help the different regions because it would help, um, you know, the Cambridge corridor. It would help Luton to provide yeah. more jobs. But the thing is, you need to have a hub so that you, get, you can get the interconnection between flights, and that's why Heathrow and Gatwick are the two options being considered. And I disagree with Sean. I think we do need a new runway because if we're going to maintain our position as an international business centre, we need to be serious about being an international the air hub. Business flights are not increasing. We don't need to provide extra airport capacity for those. All we need to do is dampen down the demand on the frequent flyers who are taking three or more leisure trips a year. It's very, very simple. And with the extra money that we would have been spending on, a, on an airport, we can do some fantastic things for transport in so the, the UK. the Green Party now saying no holidays. Uh, I've got, I've got no, a no, call. No, no, one holiday, that's the point. The holiday once oh, a year sorry. is free. The real worry, climate change cheaper. isn't being taken seriously. That's the problem. We've got to leave it there. Thank you all very much indeed. We're out of time. Many thanks to all our guests, to Catherine, to Chris, to Ed and to Sean. Most of all, thank you very much indeed to you at home for watching. I hope you have a great Christmas and a happy new year. Until I see you the next time, bye-bye. <laughs>